Today we're going to talk about my favorite pythons, the Angolan pythons, Python anchiette. It's a dwarf python between four and five foot. Many people think that they're similar to a, or a subspecies of a ball python, but they're not. They're morphologically different. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But this python was first discovered in the late 1800s, and it was named after a famous Portuguese explorer, José de Ancheta. Now, it lives in a relatively small, hostile area, southwest Africa, in the Bid Desert to Angola. It's very hostile as far as the weather. It's desert. It gets very hot. It doesn't rain there much. Sometimes it only rains once a year. And Angola, that whole area is kind of a hostile area with a lot of warring. So it's been very rare in collections for zoos and also for private collectors. Uh, until recently, we've been very successful at breeding them, so there's starting to be small amounts, small numbers that are getting into the pet trade now, and the prices come down where it's affordable for people to buy. But uh, pretty much it's a desert snake, and I talked about that it's morphologically different than a ball python. This snake has developed beaded scales, and that's to, if it does rain or there's moisture due, that accumulates on their scales and the snake will actually lick and suck it up. Uh, when they're getting ready to lay, I have uh, their nest box in there and from time to time I'll spray it and they will go and they'll start to lick, lick the water off their scales. So that's pretty unique. Also they develop this keen sense of seeing. So they have these big eyes on the side of their head. Because they live in the desert, they're probably hunting at nighttime, so they develop this eyesight. They're very curious animals. Uh, a ball python just kind of stays there and doesn't do much of anything. But whenever you open the cage, and we'll show you next, they look at you and they're very curious and they come up and take a look at you and sometimes even climb up on you. So it's a very cool python. Um, so let's, let's take a look. So this is a young pair, and uh, I set it up in, uh, they'll go in substrate like uh, aspen. I like to use newspaper because it keeps it clean. So here's the setup, and um, this is a small female, and she um, had her first set of eggs this year. She had three eggs. They have, like I said, they have three to ten eggs. She's wiggling her tail. Uh, she's hungry, and she thinks she's getting fed here. But you can see the big O eyes on them. And a lot of times you open up the cage and they just come right out at you. Oh, she's, she's a little active. Here's another pair that's breeding right now. Now, now she's coming out to say hello, and plus she's hungry. The last couple days this has been breeding. This is the female. And this one's got genetic stripes. Produces really nice striped babies. So this is pretty typical. They'll come out and look at us. And they've got uh, really developed heat sense sensors as you can see. They're very curious snakes. Very cool animals. Very beautiful. And there's the male down there. Well last year was her first year and she had five, five eggs. Good eggs three of which were totally, or almost totally, striped. I've got pictures I'll show you. I first started working with these animals back in uh, 99 or 2000. And back then they were extremely rare and cost about 5000 to 7500 each. And now they're starting to become a little more available. 
so they're affordable where everyone can get them now. But this is pretty typical. Typical. You open up the cage and they'll come up and they'll even crawl on you. So it's a good opportunity to take a look. There's the mill. And it's about uh, one month old. These readily take uh, frozen rat pups. After, um, after they're born they take about 10 days until they shed and then they feed. And very active. Here again, like I said, uh, some people consider them more like a ball python, but they're totally different. Ball pythons just kind of stay there and do nothing, but these are very active, very curious. And the babies are a little nippy, but after a while they get used to you. Beautiful little pythons. And there's two females. These are all being shipped tomorrow, so I thought I better film them to show them to you while I can. We've got another pair uh, just starting to breed, so hopefully later on in the year we'll have more. If you like this video, please like it. Give me the thumbs up, and it's right below the video here. Also, give me comments. Tell me what you like or what you don't like and what you'd like to see in these videos. This has been the first of a series that I'm going to put out, an educational series on the husbandry and breeding practices of various species of snakes. So please give me the comments and also make sure you subscribe so you can alert on the next one. Also, follow me on Instagram, Guy Guy Adventurer, and I have pictures of most of the animals that I'm working with. And when the babies are born, I post pictures of them with... Um, the prices and the availabilities. I also post pictures of animals when I'm herping and also lots of pictures when I go out on my adventure uh, travels. So please follow me, Guy Guy Adventurer. So for the next video coming up for a little teaser, it's going to be on some pythons of Australia, the Womo pythons and the black-headed pythons, the genus Aspidites. And here's an absolutely gorgeous Woma python. It's very light and contrasting and reddish. And it's just an extremely beautiful animal. And we'll talk about next, we'll talk about the breeding and husbandry practices of this snake. They're very popular and you don't want to miss this. So subscribe. So until next time, adios and go out on the trail and have some fun.